Hello and greetings from Iceland, but today I'm going to talk about the events that happened yesterday or the warning signs that we got about an eruption that will take place in a few hours. It's been a few hours and there is no eruption yet, so what is going on? And we have very good reason to ask because everything was set on high alert. The civil protection agency held a press meeting and there was a special news broadcast that most Icelanders watched and literally everything was turned upside down in Reykjavík. The media started to uh, place uh, webcams around and there are three of them now and I'm linking to them all. It's only one thing missing and that is the eruption. And uh, of course that's a good thing in a way, but uh, maybe not because it is not comfortable to have this, uh, well, ticking time bomb next door to Reykjavík. So this was not a false alarm, I would say, but it might take longer time than they expected. And since this is such a big event, I'm going to show you a bit about the bigger picture. Because it is very easy to misunderstand what is going on. For some it looks worse than it really is and my ambition is to bring you uh, as good information as possible. And the big picture is here, or this satellite photo of the Reykjanes Peninsula. And this is the Icelandic landscape. This is really something else. And uh, Keilir, the mountain that everyone is talking about now, is located here. And the epicenter of the earthquakes are here, around 5 kilometers from Keilir. And the big news is that a lava tube has been forming from this little mountain that is called uh, Little Rútur, that means uh, Little Ram, and it is crawling over to Mount Keilir. But we are not talking about that the eruption might take place in the mountain more likely around it, or uh, fissure that can extend up to 5-10 kilometers, even longer. And it was those movements that they detected yesterday that made them uh, put everything on high alert. And the reason for that is of course that here we have Reykjavík, or what we call the greater capital area. And the first town that we drive into when we are coming to Reykjavík from Keflavík International Airport is a town that we call uh, Hafnarfjörður. And Hafnafjörður is partially built on old lava. This photo shows you some of it, and the lava closest to us is one of the risk spots that we are having today. But let's move to the beginning, because this is just a part of a way bigger picture. And uh, we are going to start here on the tip of Iceland, and Iceland is the mid-Atlantic ridge that happens to be above sea level. And Iceland is being torn apart little by little, and volcanoes fill up the gaps. And the whole Reykjanes Peninsula has five or six volcanic systems. And the first system is just here, on the tip of Reykjanes. And one of the potential eruption sites is just in front of the north-south runway on Keflavík International Airport that we have here. Then we have a major power plant here. And there we have this bridge, that we call the bridge between continents. And it is a symbolic way to show people that Iceland is always under pressure being ripped apart. And what we are seeing now is exactly that. So we move on to the next volcanic system. And one of the last eruptions we had on the peninsula is in a place that we call Eldorp. In English it would be flamethrower. And the lava around there is around 800 years old. That lava is also surrounding uh, the Blue Lagoon and the power plant that supplies the Blue Lagoon with the wastewater that tourists pay to bathe in after it has uh, generated electricity in turbines. And the next to the Blue Lagoon we have a mountain and it is called Mount Thorbjörn. And that is where everything started 14 months ago. So this is not the beginning of anything. And uh, this short time lapse shows you a bit what has been going on. Let's take a look at Thorbjörn, is that uh, this mountain is 10 cm taller now than it was like a year ago. So the land has been rising there and there have been around uh, 5 magma intrusions in the region. And the next door to Thorbjörn, just south of it, is a coastal town, fisher town called Grindavík and Grindavík has been at great risk. And Grindavík is built on lava, like you see on those aerial photos. So the volcanic belt there was the volcanic belt that we thought that would uh, 
be the one that would uh, go off first. And the earthquake swarms we have been having have been dancing all around the peninsula, between those volcanic systems. And I have heard it from geologists that uh, when this region goes off, it affects all those systems. And that is what we have been seeing. The earthquake swarm has been moving through all those systems. The, it just happens to be close to Mount Keller now, but only getting stronger from what we have seen so far. And we have seen a lot. So this volcanic system that we are dealing now is on the middle of the peninsula. And the next door to this system, we have uh, the so-called uh, Krisuvikur system. And if that one starts, we would be at uh, greater risk than we are today because uh, that system extends almost into the city. And we have this uh, new residential area. This is what we have done in the last 10 years there, built on top of the lava. And the craters are around 5 kilometers away. And lots of people warned about this, not to build there. And we know now. So I think that the so-called Krisvik system is the biggest threat that we are having today. But the next system is called the Sulfur Mountain system. It is from there that we expect to have an earthquake up to 6.5 in the coming days, weeks or months. But they come every 50 years. So what is happening in a simple language? Tectonic plate movements are triggering the volcanic systems there. And it just so happens to be this particular system in this particular location close to Mount Keller that is uh, bugging us now. It would be medium or uh, small eruption. The lava fields on the Reykjanes Peninsula are relatively small. Uh, when we look at those old lava streams there, we can see that it does threaten the Reykjanes uh, highway to Keflavik, where 30,000 people live. In that case, there is a secondary road, and it is here, and this is the kind of road that I choose to use myself, and the reason is here. But that road would just do so much for us. Scientists have already made pretty good maps that are showing where the lava would flow in the situation as it is today. And it can flow both ways. It could also reach to the south coast and cut off the so-called south coast road. I think it's a very unlikely scenario. It is possible, but unlikely. The worst scenario is, of course, that in the case of eruption, all flights would automatically be shut down in Keplaik Airport. And that would last until it would be determined that it was safe to fly because of the risk of ash. But those kind of eruption that we have on this peninsula, they do not manufacture that much of ash. So the greatest risk, and what we are talking about today, is the gases that they can produce, poison gases. I have been trying to get information about what risk we have there. Could it be of a similar scale as we had in so-called Holohrein from 2014? You could not go there without a gas mask. Or do they have any scientific information that say that this area won't be as poisonous? But this will be basalt flow. So in my mind, it's a gas that is the biggest problem. So there have been meetings at Reykjavik where they have gone over ev evacuation plans for the whole city. And I saw an interview with the mayor the other day, and he said uh, about evacuating the city, it's simple, it's impossible. And he is right, 60% of the nation lives in the greater capital area. Another up to 10% here in the Reykjavik Peninsula. If the whole city would be evacuated in private cars, and we are talking about five persons each car, 50,000 cars, and to put it in perspective, the Iceland's Ring Road, Highway number 1, is around 1300 kilometers. So that row of cars would stretch to maybe 15-20% of the uh, highway system of Iceland. And where should that people go? So that is unthinkable. But the Civil Defense Agency has said that evacuation from one neighborhood to other is a more likely scenario. So the gas is the biggest risk. But I want to tell you a bit about Reykjavik because this city is covered with lava fields from west and south. This photo is shot uh, just south of the city and the other ones are nearby. And I also think that most Icelanders haven't thought about it. My interest in geology, it comes from photography. So when I'm shooting photos like this, I'm thinking, what is it? And the more I drove around to photoshoot, the more I wanted to know about my country. And the more I know about my country, the more I try to respect it, because we are so small when it comes to the natural forces here. I will make other videos about this in the next days, both updates, and I'm also going to show you more of photos. 
I'm going to do some slideshows about it. And uh, I'm going to end it today by showing you the mountain where we expect the big earthquake to happen. There have been numerous lava flows there. And I zoom in a bit deeper. And this is where the lava stream came crawling down the hill like a waterfall. And this is how the waterfall looked to me when I was driving by a few years ago. And the sun was giving me a bit of show. And when I shot this photo, I remember, I was thinking, will this region blast off someday? Will my generation see lava flow again down those hills? So this is a situation. We are so close to so many volcanic systems in the Reykjavik area. In worst case, it would be gas that would uh, evacuate parts of the city. And absolutely worst case, lava streams could come flowing elsewhere in the future. That won't happen. But this will also mean that we will not be building on lava hills as we've been doing. And we got a big reminder yesterday about what our country is all about. And I think it came as a shock to a lot of people. A lot of people in Reykjavik are in shock. And that is partially because there has been so little discussion about this in Iceland. And I have often mentioned it, social media, blogs, wherever, but nobody cared. Ah, it's all in the past. But where lava has been flowing, it can flow again. And the younger the lava, the more likely is that it will come again. So I'm going to end by saying I'm very thankful for all your comments and good thoughts. And I will be adding a few videos in the next days, shorter than this, where I will be covering in details parts of the landscape in Reykjanes. And if and when something happens, if we see eruption in the next hours or days, which is very likely, I will for sure uh, let you know. And the prime target for me has uh, never been to pretend I'm a scientist. What I am doing is simply to interpret their words with my own photos in order to make as simple picture as possible. And on the way, I'm pointing out uh, very interesting places in Iceland that not even uh, many Icelanders know about especially in the Reykjanes Peninsula, and to try to give you tips, those of you who are planning a trip here, because I've seen it in the comment section that a lot of people there are planning a trip to Iceland when possible. And I have always called this region the hidden pearl of Iceland. So I'm hoping that my channel will also reach to you who are about to visit us. Because the last thing that I recommend with my friends when they are coming to Iceland is to tell them to go the golden circle and the typical tourist round. But there is so much of uh, even finer things, more beautiful, that you can look at in peace and enjoy. That is a part of it. To be alone somewhere in nature, nobody interrupting you. To smell the nature and listen to it, feel the energy. That is a happiness. So I'm hoping that my footage is getting that through to you. And with that, I'm sending you all the best from a volcanic island, Iceland.